Let the rod get, oh wow. It's okay. I got him. <laughs> What's going on guys? Today we are continuing our hunt for the big striped bass. Now we're back at our favorite spot. I'm not gonna tell you guys where it is, don't even ask. <laughs> and today we're gonna be talking about something very interesting, some, something that a lot of people have asked about. The difference between a spinning reel and a convention reel and why use either of them. Today we're gonna be testing out how easy it is to use each of these reels and how reliable they are. My conventional reel is a Penn International 975. It was a hand-me-down from my dad. Thank you dad, love you dad, you're the best dad. <laughs> um, and basically, this thing is pretty powerful. It casts a real long mile and it's a pretty accurate cast as well. That's why I choose to use a conventional. And my spinning reel that I'm using today is a Shimano Bait Runner. You've seen us talk about this before. A classic reel. A spinner reel works really well because it's just very convenient and easy to use, easy to learn. Um, and this is one of my all time favorites. So I'm gonna get my rigs tied up right now and we'll talk about some other things. I'm gonna introduce you guys to our new bait. This is the salty squid, except we cut it into little strips like this. I'm gonna try and replicate a bloodworm with this. Um, and last time we discovered, putting squid with bloodworm works really well for the stripers. Uh, this time, we're gonna put this half of this on and half of bloodworm on. And I'm gonna, sp I'm gonna hook this on just like a blood I would a bloodworm. See? All right, and then I'm gonna cut this off. So now I'm gonna use half squid like this, and then half blood worm like this. See that? Looks great. Looks great, huh? This way, you don't have to spend too much money on the bloodworms because you'll have both the bloodworms and the squid. Squid, this salted squid will last for, for a really long time. You don't even need to refrigerate it. As long as you keep it in room temperature or in a refrigerator, no need to freeze it. This will last a long time. Really awesome to have in your tackle bag just to add on so you have extra bait. It's really nice scent. If you're interested in trying some of the squid, it's also in our store. Conventional reels have a lot of power and they have very far casting distance. Um, that is one of the major reasons why I continue to use these reels. And it was a really fun process to learn how to cast this. What I would recommend if anyone is just starting to learn this is for one, don't be afraid to get a bird's nest. It happens to me too, still to this day. It still happens to me. It's part of it. Uh, you'll get better, trust me. Within two or three practices, you're gonna get it. So what? Ha what how this works is you have a weight at the end. You push this down, keep your, keeping your thumb on here. When you let go, your weight will drop, okay? Now, how fast your weight drops is very important. And to adjust that, you turn one of these knobs right here, this knob right here. And what you want is for the weight to hit the ground and for it to stop. You don't want it to keep spinning. That's how you get a bird's nest. Let me give you an example. Ready, I'll loosen it all the way, ready? Look at my nest right here. See, it starts to twist the wrong way. So you wanna adjust that so that when you drop your weight, your spool stops spinning as well with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. See how it stops? Now, ease it off that a little bit. Perfect. Now I'm ready to cast it. Now when you cast this, this is also another important part. You're gonna wanna have your thumb. Your thumb controls the speed of this line. Before it falls down, start putting the brakes on. When, the, when it hits the ground, your, finger, your thumb should be on the reel or else you're gonna get a bird's nest.
That went so far. Spinning reel, very easy to cast, very easy to operate. This is what I grew up on, so I'm very familiar with using this. This conventional reel, uh, it took me a little bit of time to get used to. There is a learning curve on it, but as soon, after I learned how to use these kind of reels, I have not stopped using them. They're amazing. I really like to use these reels, uh, especially for, for freshwater fishing, the bait casting reels. I really like those because of the accuracy, their casting distance, and um, I've been using this one for bigger fish. So I've got some heavier braid on here. So today, guys, I want to introduce you to my uncle from the UK. How do you do, folks? It's my Uncle Bill, and I've been fishing with him for a very long time. He, what else should I say? I don't know. I didn't think it through. <laughs> he's a fantastic guy. He's a fantastic guy. He knows and everything. <laughs> and he's very modest. Thinks he knows everything. And what else? <laughs> very modest. <laughs> and he's very modest. So today I'm going to put him on some fish. He wants to catch some striped bass and we've got the spot for that. Yeah, you're on. Oh! <laughs> Oh, it's taking me for a run. Oh, oh, this is a decent one. Not the 30 pounder, trust me, it's not, but it, it's a decent one. You lost your bow. I don't okay. care. I know where it went. Hope it's not a catfish. Does it feel like it could be? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a striper. It's a striper. Whoa. All right. You need a net? No. Please be careful, please. Oh. Beautiful. And if you can just hook. All right. He took my blood worm. Took my blood worm squid combination. Took your blood worm squid combo. Yeah. This reel I really like. And I don't know why I didn't bring it sooner. My guess is 20 inches. Nice 20 inches. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> 20 inches. Well, at least you know you On the do. dot. Give a good um, guess. Bye bye, friend. Woo. See ya. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you feel that wriggle. That's not a catfish. How does the power of the reel feel? Does it feel okay or does it feel awkward to you? Uh, feels alright. Behind you. Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Nice fish. Nice, Uncle Bill. Yeah, that's your fish. <laughs> that's your fish. You want to get technical? He wants to hook it. <laughs> Doesn't feel very strong on this big rod, huh? No. That's the downside. I feel like this is for very big fish. Yeah, yeah, it gets sharp on yeah, it. This is, I feel like this will be good for the 30 pounder I'm going for. Yeah. But still, it was, even that good sized fish was a little too much. It was it's still to a little bit over de overdone. Oh! Oh! Okay, be careful, be careful. That's a nice one. Taking me for a ride. This is this is a big one, for sure. I'm just gonna let it fight and tie her out out there a little bit. Make sure that I'm keeping tension at all times. You don't want that line of slack. Still running me. 
that the rod get oh wow it's okay I got him <laughs> Oh my goodness. What had happened is it, it oh, it got oh. off. Oh. No, that means, oh no. What happened? It just, it just didn't. It stuck the hook. That was a really big one. Oh no. Darn it. That was your fish right there. It's slapped too. Get another one out there, there might be more of them. <laughs>